Hi, this is Timo from Supercritical. Welcome to the second episode of our YouTube series about the Redshift 6. In this episode, we'll go into some of the features and concepts in the Redshift 6 and its current prototype. Basically, just keep in mind that we're not promising that all of these features will be as they are now in this episode, but probably some version of everything will be present at some point. So screen-wise, the final design of the UI is still in progress, but we are already prototyping a lot of stuff and there is, a, there is an overall concept that we're aiming toward. By the time we're filming this, we've already gotten the designs for what will be the final UI graphics-wise and so on, uh, but for now we'll be showing you the current state as these visual designs have not yet been implemented into the firmware. So, the name of the synthesizer, or like the subtitle, is a variable character synthesizer. So, this is the idea that we kind of introduced uh, in a very limited form with a neutron flux filter, where we we're changing the behavior of the internal signal path of the filter to get various kinds of characters, and then in the end we actually we can bring some very different filter modes and stuff. So, we're expanding this in the Redshift 6 uh, by basically making the character control more or less all of those subtle uh, differences in the voice that uh, are usually the kind of things you look for by getting another synthesizer that has a different character. So we're trying to get you to give you the chance to move around in the character. So, of course, that means that we need to be able to develop the characters. So there's a character editor in the current uh, in the current uh, synthesizer UI, supported by actually what is the original editor for the neutron flux filter, which allows us to adjust the filter response, uh, then things like how much detuning we have uh, between the voices, what are the uh, features of, uh, like the various details of the detuning, uh, envelope variations be between various uh, voices, uh, envelope, uh, exact envelope shapes, and so on and so on. And of course, uh, one of the important parts is the gain staging, so how hard we drive various parts of the signal chain, which uh, of course then has a big effect on the sound much before we actually get to anything that sounds like distortion per se. Here's a little demo of the character functionality. <laughs> One of the important concepts in the synthesizer uh, is engines. So this is basically the idea that uh, with such a flexible signal path that we have, uh, there's a lot of kind of tricks that you can play that make the synth do, do things, but they're very involved in setting up. So one of the examples would be the what we call the sync trick from the Demon Core Oscillator module, where you basically set the phases of 16 oscillators in very specific relations so that you can get these flanges, weepy sounds and, and things like that. Here's a little demo of that. So if we just gave you 16 oscillators with full detailed controls of everything, setting this up would take, you know, tens of minutes at least. And then if you wanted to change to have change it to have slightly different sweep or something, you'd need to go through everything again. So we don't want you to have to do that. So we're packaging these tricks into what we call engines. So right now what we have on the synthesizer is oscillator engines. Uh, so one of them is what we call the Demon Core engine, which is more or less a re-implementation of the Demon Core oscillator module. And the other engine is what we call dual oscillator, which is uh, basically our take on the standard two oscillator vintage polysynth. Except that you can of course stack these, because you know, why not, since we have a lot of them. And as it stands right now, the aforementioned sync trick is unintuitively actually implemented in the dual S oscillator engine. Uh, this will probably be broken down into uh, several engines, because uh, now the dual oscillator engine is actually three pages long and we, we are trying to keep everything into one page per engine. So those are a couple of examples of engines and um, other ideas that we have and will be implementing is for an example what we call a transistor organ engine. So if you just stack a lot of waves into consecutive 
octaves or even just partials, so integer multiples of each other, you can make stuff that very easily sounds like a vintage transistor organ. This is something we learned using the octave stack features of the Demon Core Oscillator already. So this is, for an example, something we'll, we're looking to package into a nice little engine where you'll probably actually have draw bars and stuff like that. There's also some considerably more advanced thoughts that we're thinking about, but more details on those as we implement them. So we're also going to expand the uh, engine idea into others than just the oscillator. This far it's implemented also in the filter. So here we have uh, a basic classic filter engine. Here's some sound samples. And that's kind of where you have your basic low pass filters. Uh, all of them are multi mode, so there's a mode you can go to band pass or high pass. And uh, this filter implements, like most directly, the slight variations with respect to character. So you, when you turn the character, you get actually different pole counts even in the various modes and so on. But basically, your controls for the filter will remain uh, in the safe and uh, sound territory. So you have your cutoff, you have your resonance, you have your modes, like the most exotic thing here. Uh, this is something I actually expect you to mostly use for standard analog synthesizer sounds. Uh, one of the other engines we have is a phaser engine. So here the controls are quite different. And uh, basically this is, in its basic mode, it's really just a four-pole phaser, so two notches moving in tandem. And the controls reflect that. We also have a few extras, like there's a skew, which allows you to move the, basically, for those of you who know, the pole and the zero to slightly different places, so that gives you an emphasis near the actual notch, and taken to extreme, it makes it kind of a funny version of a low-pass or a high-pass filter. Here's a little sound sample of the phaser. You might also enjoy hearing the phaser in stereo using two voices stacked with uh, opposite modulations in the two channels. The third filter engine we've implemented this far is a formant filter, which has uh, various formants. I think currently we have A, E, O, U and I, unless I'm mistaken. So here you have something that looks a lot like our classic filter uh, in terms of having a mode, a cutoff, resonance, but the resonances are adjusted so that they naturally make four formants, and then there's a formant control used to select the specific formant you're using. And here's a little demo of the formant filter. So this concludes a quick run through of the features uh, related to the engine concept uh, on the uh, Redshift 6. In the future, it'll probably extend even further, like uh, we could have an envelope engine and so on, but that's for the future. So the very basic idea, just to recap here, is that we're trying to package synthesis techniques into easy to control packages, or engines as we say, so that you can get quickly to making music. You don't have to think about the technical details, you just pick the kind of thing you're looking to, and you immediately get the controls that are most significant for that specific patch. So, I want to thank you for your time, and uh, hope you enjoyed your time with the features of the Redshift 6, and we'll also be in Superbooth 2024, so come say hi to us and to our synthesizer. See you soon.
Hi again, we thought we'd add a quick sneak peek of the development of the final UI in this episode. So far we've began work on the dual oscillator page and then continued on to the filter and envelope controls. They are still in early stages but this should give out the idea of what we're aiming for. The design was created with the help of paper noise. Some of you might be familiar with paper noise from mutable instruments modules. We also expect that the parts for the final casing and the electronics will arrive soon. Stay tuned! If you managed to follow this far, check out the bottom of the product page of the Redshift 6 at our website for a free drum sample pack made entirely on the Redshift 6 synthesizer. Have fun!